turkey farming is truly a family affair for the Gessel family of Swanville. At one point, brothers Don, Rich, Frank, John, and Joe Gessel and their father Joe Gessel Sr. were all involved in turkey farming. Father Joe, brothers Don and Rich Gessel have since passed away while Frank, John, and Joe Gessel watch as the third and fourth generations of the family take over production and continue forging the family legacy. Even though they didn't begin raising turkeys until later, poultry production was a part of the family business. Joe Gessel Sr. operated a feed mill serving farmers in the region in the 1920s. There's a certificate on my wall that was presented to my dad in 1928 that said... Joe Gessel, my father's name was Joe. Joe Gessel could get you more uh, get you more eggs and whatever, and it was signed by Perita in 1928. So he'd been in the feed business quite a while. John Gessel raised some turkeys in the mid 1950s, which began the family's turkey farming legacy. The first white turkeys, broilers from Wilmer, they talked me into it. Uh, I had about 10,000 started, and that's how I kind of really got into it. And then I went from there to bronze because I could raise more bronze because I could put them out on the, on the range. The white turkeys I had to keep in a building. They were broilers. Even as a child, John Gessel seemed destined to raise turkeys. Uh, superintendent of the Swallow Schools, one day he handed me a book. He said, John, here's something you can have, an old book in the library. Here was how to raise turkeys and there was a New York dress in there. In the front of the book, they had the little cards with your name on. Mm -hmm. I looked in there, and here was my name, so I had the, maybe in eighth grade. My name was on that card, and Ed Vanzels, the only two guys. At their peak, the Gessels operated a feed mill and raised about three and a half million birds per year. It was a true family affair, involving five brothers and their dad, who made a potentially challenging business dynamic work smoothly. We've, we've been asked that so many times. Yeah. How can your family, with, that, with the four or five of you in there, make this thing work without arguments and so forth? And I said, well, we have our differences. We have discussions, but when we settle in on something, we all went with it and, and made it work. So We never had anything major. major. No. Our yeah. arguments were, no. were about some silly thing or whatever the brothers have and not... We never had anything that made. Well, I don't think it was really arguments. We had discussions where we didn't agree. Right. But then we would Is that say, OK. Is that the black eye? Yeah. <laughs> Over the course of several decades, the Gessel family found successes and numerous challenges, including an outbreak of avian influenza in the 1970s. The state of Minnesota was the first one hit with that. They didn't really know what it was. And consequently, they hit this area real bad. And there was no government bailouts or nothing. You just, you had to. on Thanksgiving Day, I'd bury 7,500 mature turkeys and then come home for Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> which is unusual. That was Frank Gessel took on leadership roles in the turkey industry, including serving on the Minnesota Turkey Growers Association Board and a term as National Turkey Federation President. He recognized the value operations like the NTF and the MTGA play in helping turkey farmers. When they got formed and going, they um, were another asset to the fact that they would be up to date with uh, new information as to laws and, yeah. and uh, permits and so forth. And then they brought people together and then they could pair notes and consequently it just kind of blossomed. And we're out there busy raising turkeys and doing this, but someone has to be the watchdog as well uh, yeah. to keep the uh, everybody informed of what you can do, can't do, and what's coming up and what you should be aware of and so forth. And it, uh, it's a good service, yeah. Is it so. fair to say that there's a place for organizations like MTGA in the next 80 years? That's, yeah, to me there is. No question. There will be, yeah.